set will kill. All right, a little bit about me. I, uh, I, uh, I grew up Christian conservative. That can be kind of icky in some rooms. Middle child of three, the other two are gay. Um, so I was really the only child. <laughs> <laughs> My career took off at about 11. Drummer turned, been slapping skins ever since. <laughs> no, Christian conservative. Uh, my dad was an army brat, and that kind of showed itself in ways of punishment. Uh, when the hit didn't work, he comes home one day and he says, Lay on the floor, the man's behind your back. This dude caught me putting sugar in my plain yogurt. He said, 15-year-olds shouldn't be unsupervised in the kitchen. Whoa, Dad, you went to work this morning at Garbage Man, and you come back to GRPD. What's going on, buddy? Our house is foreclosed on. It was the beginning of 2008 and a very rough year in my family. So that's what that was. No, but he has, uh, he's got cancer now. And unfortunately, I think it's made him soft. <laughs> For example, on his like custom built AR-15, he's got this cute little ribbon that says fuck cancer. That's soft. <laughs> Real soft. No, but uh, when he was at the hospital and he was going over the prognosis with the doctor, um, they decided that they weren't gonna go they weren't gonna go the route of chemotherapy or anything. Uh, they're gonna go the holistic route. My father heard the ballistic route. So, I think he thinks he's fighting this thing with his gun. Power to him. I mean, he's following his convictions on what to do with his own body. He's been able to help out quite a few people in all reality, though. Um, you know, going the holistic journey and changing his diet radically and exercise and all of that. Um, there's a uh, family friend of ours whose seven-year-old has leukemia, and he said, not to worry, step aside, and he shot the fucker dead. <laughs> so, he's killing two nasty birds with one bullet right there. You got a kid and he's cancerous, get him out. <laughs> get him out. No. I, uh, I think we need to up the bullying a bit. When Michelle Obama was in office, she was focusing on like the anti-bullying campaign and whatnot. Well, it's been over a decade, and they've left Reddit, and the freaks are out in the real world now. It's a bit too much. For example, I work with a furry. Uh, if you don't know what a furry is, uh, on all levels except physical, they believe that they are, you know, a fox, a hawk, or a wolf. Well, I've got a fox in shipping. And, um, he's one of these guys who, you know, he wants to let you know more and more about this obscure lifestyle each day without being prompted. For example, I noticed that he would wear fox-related clothing every day. And then I noticed that he was leaving fox icons on, like, the top right of, like, shipping documents. And then he told me about this convention that he went to, a furry convention. There's a convention for everything, so that checks out. But then he talked about this hotel party that had diapers involved, and I thought, this kid needed to be hit once more than what he was growing up. But anti-bullying prevented that. <laughs> it used to be that if you had a face that looked like it needed to be hit, you just got hit. You got rocked. That. I was bound to check a few motherfuckers who were going to go too far in the future. Not today. <laughs> Come out of the closet. Just stay inside the house when you're at work for me. Please. Yeah. Kirby. I don't like that descriptor. I think it's overused and cliche. Um, I like the term short and squatty, I'll butt nobody. <laughs> 
according to that. You can use it. Um, yeah, and the term looking like, so it's the same looking like a snack. I think people still say that, at least, I don't know, I've heard it, but I, I'm not, I'm not into that either. Um, especially when they ask, why are you built like a gummy bear? <laughs> That's not the snack we're treating on tonight, buddy. That was rude as hell. <laughs> Try again. Gummy predator. <laughs> uh, the internet has skewed celebrities for me. We see them as kids growing up now, spitting on fans, holding babies over balconies, crazy documentaries about their sex life and whatnot. I'm with these guys. I'm with Jimi Hendrix. I'm with uh, Val or Amy Winehouse, who sings Valerie. I'm with uh, the 27 Club. They knew when to get out of the business. The 27 Club, I guess for those of you who don't know, um, they are a group of musicians who died at 27. Um, like I said, they just knew when to get out of the business. Otherwise, they knew that now they'd be making Christmas music with uh, Lady Gaga. And nobody's going to believe Kurt Cobain had a Merry Christmas on the radio. <laughs> he's not convincing anybody he's having a Merry Christmas with Lady Gaga. No. Oh, uh, let's see. Um, fish pictures. Are we a fan of fish pictures at all? No. We got a hook and a shirt. Okay. So on dating apps, it's been said that there are a lot of fish pictures, and ladies have been complaining about this. Um, if they're vegetarian, they don't want to be scrolling through and seeing a dead creature on their time, you know, on their feed. Um, some women view it as barbaric and it might manifest itself in other aspects of this man's life. Um, I'm pro fish picture. It lets me know he's familiar with the smell. <laughs> it lets me know he's comfortable with the terrain. <laughs> the muck and the mire, no questions asked. Pro fish picture. The mud up, shut up type guys. <laughs> yeah. I always think it's kind of funny, like the most like tough homophobic men love a tomboy. <laughs> they love a girl that can change her brakes, toss a line, kill a dirty 30 and natty ice on a fishing trip. Ask your buddy Dave, he's got titties too. <laughs> They're even. Yeah, I wish white guys had called more. Um, not because I'm on the prowl, it's for safety reasons. Uh, if I'm walking by a black dude, I know his intentions right away. He usually just wants to show me how grateful he is for how I'm wearing these jeans. You say, I don't know what else to do with them, and I keep on going. Uh, with the white dude, though, I walk past him, and his hoodie's up, he's silent. I'm on my way in my car and I think I'm in the clear, but then later I end up hogtied in the back of his car. It's just a crazy guessing game. I'm just asking you to speak up a little bit. It's getting hard in these streets, these crazy white dudes. Alright, I'm Haley Potter. Give it up for Brian. Right, that's the whole country. Right? Oh. <laughs> yeah, a little bit about me. 
me. Uh, I'm poor. I'm poor. <laughs> one of those poor guys. I got roommates. Um, you can just hear them fucking. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know that was what I was getting into. You can just hear them fucking. I realize that when you're hearing people have sex in a different room and you're just there, you feel a little left out. <laughs> feel a little left out, dude. You know what I'm saying? They're just in there having sex. You're like, just sitting there like, I can put me in the game, coach. You know what I'm saying? I'm lovable. I'm fuckable. I'm lovable. But now my only goal is that the next time I have sex in that house, motherfuckers are gonna know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's my only goal in life. Motherfuckers are gonna know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna hit it like a black uncle says he hits it at the barbecue. <laughs> It's like mindfulness is a 
good thing, you know, but you hit your wife with its consequences. <laughs> you know, Hitting your wife, that's not cool. That's not a cool thing to do. I feel like cool, the term cool changed as I aged. You know what I'm saying? When I was a kid, to be, uh, the meaning of cool was like you owned a leather jacket and didn't talk a lot. That was a cool guy. You know what I'm saying? And then you're like, oh man, this kid's cool. I'm gonna talk to him. And you're like, weather's nice, right? And he's like, couldn't be better. You're like, that's kind of a cool thing to say. You know what I'm saying? And then he crosses the street and a bus passes and he disappears with it. That's a cool guy. That's a cool guy. Cool dude. Now coolness is just the barrier, the base level to hang. You know what I'm saying? If, if you're bringing a new friend over and they're like, hey, is Trevor cool? You're like, yeah, I mean, he's never sexually assaulted anybody. Yeah. <laughs> I guess he's cool. He's a fucking math lead in high school, but yeah, he's cool. <laughs> he never touched a titty he wasn't supposed to, so yeah, he's cool. <laughs> so sure. <laughs> when I was growing up, uh, my mom used to say, uh, uh, she used to go, uh, when my ears were ringing, she'd go, that means someone's talking about you. That means someone's talking about you. But she'd always say it as like a nice thing, you know? But as an adult, when my ears ring now, I'm like, who the fuck's talking shit? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Nobody's wasting their good words not to your face. Are you nuts? In this economy? No way. <laughs> no way. If they're talking, no one's talking behind your back like, I just think Dante's so cool and like so funny and so funny and like Big Dick. Big Dick, I was going to say Big Dick. <laughs> I was going to say that. You got Big Dick. I'm not saying that. They're behind your back, they're talking, they're like, Dante's not funny, not a cool dude, small dick. That's what they're, That's what they're saying. If you got something to say to someone, say it to their face. You know? If you got something to say to someone, say it to their face. He also said, uh, make sure there's a knife within reach. My dad was 5'3". He was about defense. He was a man about defense. <laughs> He's bigger than me and I got a knife. That's even Stevens. <laughs> That's what he said to me one time. He's a fully black dude, but like he'll switch white on you like that, dude. Real quick. Like he works at McDonald's, because of course he does. And so you'll call and you're like, what are you going to do today? He's like, ah, oh, nothing. About to pick up this bitch, get some weed, go to the crib. Oh, someone walked in. Hello, ma'am. Like, that's your customer service voice? You used to hit me. You're just twirling around McDonald's? All right, All right you guys, I've been down to Maverick, because he was a maverick. Right? 
Didn't like rules, that guy. That was a little on the nose. And then there was Iceman. They called him Iceman because he had a really icy disposition. Like, he wouldn't have a nice conversation with you. He wouldn't go out for coffee with you unless it was a nice coffee. <laughs> and then there was Goose. And they called him Goose because he ended up splattered on the windshield of an airplane. <laughs> The, the new movie's pretty good. I, I actually really liked it, but I was disappointed to find out that Goose's son was not played by Ryan Cosway. <laughs> Why do I have to be the one to think of this? That doesn't make any sense. Uh, I have a million dollar idea. I'll take investors after the show if you're interested in uh, investing in my million dollar idea. I want to start making kayaks out of recycled X body spray bottles. We're going to call them douche canoes. <laughs> Uh, I just, I, I've been doing some traveling recently, and I just, uh, I stayed at this hotel, and they didn't tell me when I made the reservation, but they were doing a meetup that weekend for people with vestigial tails. You guys know, those, those are, those are people with tails. That's a real thing that some people have. Anybody here got a tail? No, you have to self-identify, it's all right. But I got to meet a few of them, I went down to the hotel bar, and we had some drinks, and they kept knocking mine off the table. <laughs> Tails. That's why that's a joke. That's pretty good. Uh, you guys know what ellipses are? Ellipses, those are those uh, dot dot dots that we all use in text messages way too much. Why do we do that? Why do we all end every sentence now with three periods instead of just the one period that actually tells us that that's the end of the thought, right? Like now we just leave everything sort of with an unspoken mystery at the end of every single text message. Why do we do that? Because I was, I was waiting uh, to meet somebody for lunch today, uh, and he sent me a text that said, I'll be right there, dot, dot, dot. What the fuck's that dot, dot, dot mean? Are you going to be there or not? I just want to know if we're going to be there. No, but that's, that's what we're supposed to use them for. The dot, dot, dot just leaves a little bit unspoken, right? It's a little bit of a, just unspoken there at the end. And I, I kind of, I caught myself doing it too, like when I'm sending text messages to a lady, like I use it to sound a little bit flirty, right? It's unspoken, a little bit left to the imagination, right? So if I'm, I'm going to be like, how's it going, dot, dot, dot? What's you up to, dot, dot, dot? And she'll text me back, she'll text me back, stop texting me, period. <laughs> no, I'm okay getting them back. I actually like when people send them back to me, I like when you flirt with me. That, that makes me feel good, right? We all like being flirt. We all like being flirted with. That makes us feel good. So that's why I say just keep giving them to me. Ellipses are sort of like the anal beads of punctuation. <laughs> yeah, just keep giving them to me. I'll tell you when I've had enough. <laughs> I went about as good as it was supposed to. Uh, I've been trying a lot of new things recently. Uh, they talk, you talked about uh, meditation earlier. I, I tried that, it didn't really work out for me. Somebody told me to try Reiki massage. You know what that is? Yeah, Reiki massage is just like a regular massage, except um, they don't touch you at all. I had no idea what, what I was getting into up there, but I, 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 she told me to lay down on the table, and she's like, that'll be $150. What the fuck just happened? Explain to me what you just did. She's like, okay, well, we're using the focused energies of the universe to try and, you know, get your chakras in order. And I'm like, is it magic? She's like, no, it's not magic. We're just using the powers of positive thinking. I'm like, all right, if it feels like magic, because you made $150 disappear, and I feel relatively the same. <laughs> uh, I just, the world confuses me. Everything about the world confuses me. Like, simple things like turnstiles. Like, we, we didn't walk through any turnstiles here, but some places like a ball game or Cedar Point or Menards for some reason. <laughs> why does Menards have a turnstile? I don't get it. Like, why are some places still like, look, you can't come in here until you rub your crotch on a pole? <laughs> Menards is stupid. Do you agree with, you agree with me? I, I just don't get it. Like, Lowe's makes sense, Home Depot, those are very straightforward stores, but Menards? feels Canadian, doesn't it? It's just different in there. Like, they sell everything that you would expect at a hardware store. You can get plywood there. You can also buy milk. Who's going to Menards to buy milk? 
Probably the same people that are going there to buy the romance novels. You can get romance novels there too. So I can get romance novels and milk and plywood. All the same shopping trip. But I can't get any of them until they were up Menards on their pole. Uh, I, I told you, I have weird interactions everywhere I go. Like, simple things like the deli. They always throw questions at me at the deli that I don't know the answers to. Like, how thick do you want that? I don't know how to answer that question. I don't, does anybody else know how to answer that question? I don't get it. Like, all I know is I just don't want to be known as the guy at the Kroger who likes his meat extra thick. <laughs> like, that's a reputation that follows you all my thing. No, I just, I still don't know how to answer the question. There's no frame of reference. There's no, like, number system. There's nothing to help you answer the question, how thick do you want that? Like, is anybody going to the deli asking for an inch of bologna? No, that's gross. No, I like eating my bologna like a steak. So I've been trying to get back at them. I've started ordering things that they can't answer. I'll take a week's worth of provolone. <laughs> uh, give me 5,000 calories of the potato salad. Uh, I'll take twice as much salami as the next guy wants. And slice it all lengthwise. All right, thank you so much. I had a good time.